Bradley. I invite you now all to rise, please, for the presentation of the colors by our police honor guard and the playing of our national anthem by guitarist Hingham High School junior Jack Pilot. 
Bugler, sound to the colors. Parade cut. Detail, a ten, a. Present arms. Detail, order, arms. I now invite Hingham Veterans Council member Jay Ippolito to come forward to give the invocation. Please remain standing. Let us pray. Almighty God, we gather here today to honor our veterans, those who have served our country so that we may continue to live our lives in freedom. During these difficult times, as we struggle to put our lives back together after the onslaught of COVID-19, we find, uh, find ourselves distracted and unfocused. Please help us to be more focused and constantly reminded of the sacrifices that have been made so willingly by these brave men and American women. Guide them as they walk with courage and pride, knowing that they have done their part to keep us in a free and democratic society. Lord, we pray that you watch over them vigilantly and bestow on them and their families the peace, love, and joy that they so richly deserve. We ask all these things in your name, amen. Please be seated. Test, test, test. <clears throat> we gather here today, as we do each year, to pay tribute to those who have given of themselves by serving in our nation's armed forces. At a time when so many civic traditions have fallen by the wayside, this is a tradition that we in Hingham are right to keep. In doing so, we recognize and we honor the sacrifice made by the few for the good of the many. 
We acknowledge that in this room, in this small New England town, there are today, as there have been, generation after generation, men and women who have given of themselves in extraordinary ways. We recognize that the veteran's sacrifice is one shared by the veteran's spouse, children, and family. So in thanking those who have served, we pay tribute as well to their families who have kept the home fires burning during their loved one's time of service. Now, service to our community is a hallmark of Hingham's character. And while many of us give this service locally, those of our fellow citizens who have served the nation in the country's military have given of themselves in quite a different way and at quite a different cost. Whether in peacetime or amidst conflict and war, the veteran has played a role that increasingly few of us undertake. Each has exhibited a devotion to duty, honor, and country. Each has set an example for all of us to emulate. Each is due our praise, our admiration, and our gratitude. Each is deserving of our continuing support and our advocacy to ensure that the needs of the veteran are met, are met on a local, a state, and a national level. This is the least that we can do for those who have done so much for us. We are gathered together to honor these people, and we are joined by some special guests we have our select board in place, Joe Fisher, Bill Ramsey, himself a Lieutenant Colonel, United States Army Reserve, Liz Klein, Town Clerk, Carol Falvey, Town Treasurer, Gene Montgomery, our Town Administrator, Tom Mayo, our Town Assistant Administrator, Art Robert, Lieutenant Colonel, retired, Chief of Police, David Jones, Chief of uh, Fire Chief, rather, Stephen Murphy. We have greetings from Congressman Lynch, who is doing his primary duty today as a United States Congressman in Washington. We also have greetings from the General Counsel and Secretary for Massachusetts Veterans Affairs, as well as greetings and citations from State Senator Patrick O'Connor, State Representative Joan Moschino, and State Representative James Murphy, whose representative was here earlier today. Next, I invite again the Hingham High School Band under the direction of Mr. Bryant Sincata to perform the armed services, uh, armed forces rather medley. I'd invite veterans in the audience to rise as your particular service song is played.
Next, I invite Joe Fisher, Chair of our Select Board, to come forward and make his remarks on behalf of himself and the Board. Joe. Mr. Moderator, Captain DeLue, Lieutenant Colonel Ramsey, Lieutenant Colonel Robert, honored guests and friends. Today we honor the service and sacrifice of veterans throughout the history of our nation. We stand in awe of their commitment to our country and their devotion to the fundamental principles that led to the formation of our great republic as embodied in our Constitution. This commitment to our country was ingrained in each of our veterans from the moment they put on the uniform. Each branch of the military has its own creed. In the Navy, they learned the Sailor's Creed that begins, I am a United States sailor. I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America, and I will obey the orders of those appointed over me. In the Army, they are taught the, the Soldier's Creed, which begins, I am an American soldier. I am a warrior and a member of a team. I serve the people of the United States and live the Army values. In the Air Force, the Airmen's Creed proclaims, I am an American airman, guardian of freedom and justice, my nation's sword and shield, its sentry and Avenger. I defend my country with my life. The creed of the United States Coast Guard includes many commitments, including the following. I shall live joyless, joyously, but always with due regard for the rights and privileges of others. I shall endeavor to be a model citizen in the community in which I live. I shall sell life dearly to an enemy of our country, but give it freely to rescue those in peril. And the Marines' Creed, which ends as follows. Before God, I swear this creed. My rifle and myself are the defenders of my country. We are the masters of our enemy. We are the saviors of my life. So be it, until victory is America's and there is no enemy but peace. Those military creeds are the foundations on which our veterans have built their lives of service to the United States. We owe them all a debt of gratitude. But who are they? When did they serve? We see numerous veterans here, but let me give you the numbers. There are around 19 million United States veterans as of this year. That's according to data from the Department of Veterans Affairs. Gulf War era veterans now account for the largest share of all U.S. veterans, about 41 percent. Vietnam era veterans make up 31 percent of all veterans. Veterans who served in the Korean conflict represent about 5 percent of veterans. And World War II veterans represent less than 1.3 percent of all veterans. Veterans with no wartime service who served only in peacetime account for about 22% of all veterans. Massachusetts is home to about 2% of the nation's veterans. Here in our town, the town of Hingham, the most recent count that I've seen shows that we have about 245 veterans. And sadly, as of six days ago, our count has been diminished. One of the town's beloved veterans, Ernie Christos Sophus, passed away last Friday, February, uh, November 5th, at the age of 91. Ernie and his wife Mary lived in Hingham for 50 years, where they raised their two daughters, Lisa and Dinah. Ernie enlisted in the U.S. Army during the Korean conflict and was sent to Nuremberg, Germany, as a second lieutenant. He served for two years as executive officer of a supply depot. After being honorably discharged, Ernie began an extensive career in marketing and in the food business, first with McCormick Company, then Pepperidge Farm, 
then Howard Johnson's, where he ultimately ran the division responsible for furnishing and equipping, equipping all of their restaurants and hotels. While Ernie's first commitment was to his family, he had two other passions, church and veterans. For the church, Ernie created Greek Orthodox church communities in five communities, including Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and our neighboring community in Cohasset. For veterans, Ernie worked tirelessly to support and honor his fellow veterans. One of his greatest contributions was spearheading the restoration of Hingham's GAR Hall, which was originally built in 1888 by Union Army veterans. GAR Hall was dilapidated and ready to be torn down in the early 2000s when Ernie stepped in to help orchestrate a combination of state and federal and local funding to transform the site into a military museum with educational programs that connect high school students with veterans. Ernie also worked behind the scenes to help veterans experiencing housing, financial, and social difficulties. The town of Hingham salutes all its veterans, and we will miss Ernie Sophus. A celebration of his life will be held next Saturday, November 20th at 1 p.m. at the Old Ship Church. God bless America. Next, I will introduce our principal speaker today, Captain Ben Delu, United States Marine Corps. Let me tell you a little bit about our friend Ben Delu. Ben is a resident of Hingham, where he lives with his wife, Sarah, and their children, Piper and Lachlan. Ben is a former active duty United States Marine Corps officer, where after completing OCS in 2008 and graduating from Suffolk University, Ben accepted a commission as a second lieutenant in the Marine Corps platoon leader class program. As a command and control systems officer, Ben reported into 1st Battalion, 6th Marines, an infantry battalion stationed at Camp Lejeune in North Carolina. Deploying to Afghanistan in 2011, 12, Ben led a platoon of 78 Marines in clear, hold, and build operations throughout the Helmand province, specifically in Marja, Sangin, and Kajaka, Afghanistan, during Operation Eastern Storm, Operation During Freedom, the final U.S. offensive against the Taliban in that region. After promotion to captain, Ben was selected to serve as the officer selection officer for Central Florida, res responsible for an area of operations spanning over 22,000 square miles and the recruitment of some of the finest young men and women this country has to offer as the next generation of officers in the United States Marine Corps. During Ben's three-year tour of duty in Florida, he selected, mentored, and commissioned over 100 aviation, ground, and law officers into our Marine Corps. Ben departed active service in May of 2016 with personal awards they included the Navy and the Marine Corps Commendation Medal, awarded twice, the Combat Action Ribbon, the Afghanistan Campaign Medal, twice awarded, and the Recruiting Service Ribbon. While transitioning into civilian life, Ben earned his master's degree in banking and financial service management from Boston University. Ben is now a senior vice president at Brown Brothers Harriman, where he serves as the head of enterprise risk management, cyber and technology, accountable for the governance and the oversight of Brown Brothers Cyber Security Program and its technology-related risk efforts and strategic initiatives. Locally, Ben acts as the current chair of the Hingham Veterans Council, the Brown Brothers Harriman Military Veterans Network and he's also an active member of Veterans Advocacy hiring initiatives and programs such as the Veterans on Wall Street program. My friends, 
allow me to invite forward Captain Benjamin M. Delu, United States Marine Corps. Thank you. And uh, before I begin, and before I jump into my speech, I, I was speaking with Brian, wherever he is, and every one of the students behind me here today, and including Jack, have a day off. This was not mandatory for them. They came on their own fruition to support the town in this effort. So I wanted to thank everybody. And I, I also want to take the opportunity to thank uh, the town itself, to thank our select board members. Um, this, it doesn't go without notice that we're not, this doesn't happen in every town. It's pretty amazing that we get to do this. We fill this room. We have this antique flag and this antique hall. It's, it's a beautiful thing. So thank you all for that as well. So. And I have to say, I'm, I'm absolutely humbled to be here. And I'm absolutely humbled to uh, be asked to provide this speech today and to give the speech today. And as I sat down a couple weeks ago and I began writing the speech, I fully intended on sitting down and writing out the words Veterans Day speech across the top of the page. And I paused and I thought to myself, is it an apostrophe S or is it an S? I'm like, this is absolutely not a good way to start writing a speech. And, but after doing some brief digging and uh, some self-reflection, I, I soon landed at the answer. That this is not a day that belongs to veterans. It's not possessive. It's a day that's attributive to them. But it's also a day that we, veterans and non-veterans alike, we get to share. Now, I'm going to give a disclaimer here. I am nobody special. I'm not a Medal of Honor recipient. I am a guy from Rhode Island that's proud of his country, understanding both the flaws and the strengths of it all. I'm a guy from Rhode Island that remembers September 11, 2001, and the images, just like many of you here in this room, pretty much everyone in this room, we remember the images that are burned into our, our minds for the rest of our life. I'm one of the tens of thousands that raise their right hand every year to join the ranks of America's military. And today I speak from the perspective of a civilian, a resident of this town. However, as many of you know, uh, Marines are quite fond of our titles. And so I also speak to you as a Marine with firsthand insight and understanding of the resolve that our service members, that we regularly display. This is the first time that I've put this uniform on in six years. And yes, I'm still happy it fits. <laughs> it's also the first Veterans Day since the war in Afghanistan effectively came to an end. It's a very symbolic day for me. It's a very symbolic day for the lot of us. It can also be a very emotional day for us. But today, across the country, here, across the world, Americans will pause. We'll pause to honor our fighting men and women who have many generations underwritten our freedom by their duty, their honor, and their service. Today, as we reflect on the blessings of our liberty, the ability to speak your mind, to go where you want to go, eat what you want to eat, do whatever it is you want to do on any single day, we must never forget that we cannot rightfully celebrate that joy of freedom without remembering the great price that's been paid for it. Now, my message today is twofold. First, to the audience, that the members of the audience that have served or have lost loved ones, to those that have served us or have lost loved ones, to the non-veterans. Today has always served as a bridge a connection between our two worlds. It's a day where we get to come together with our broader families, our friends, our communities, and we get to share of our experiences. We get to be proud of who we are and what we've done. And at the same time, it's a day where you all, 
by attending events such as this, by showing up on your days off, by shaking the hands of a veteran, by saying thanks. It shows your support, which on behalf of all the veterans here, means the world to us. And as I reflect on my own time, I recognize that all veterans have given something to this country. Some have given all, laying down their lives to defend the freedoms that we hold so dear. My generation of veterans, we don't seek out the community. We rarely join VFWs. Many of us rarely even seek assistance from the VA. We, we did not fight in a conventional war. We fought in an asymmetric warfare that spanned two decades. Fought by different sides with different goals and broader perceptions, using radically different methods to conduct a war and a broader struggle against the global war on terrorism. But the truth is, it doesn't end. We carry these experiences, both the good and the bad, the things that have changed us forever, we carry them with us forever. And life as a veteran can be insular. And although Veterans Day is in a lot of ways a celebration, it's also a day of remembrance and reflection. Being here today, all of you are making that connection across the bridge, showing your support to the people that go forward and answer the call. And I am eternally grateful. For those Marines, soldiers, airmen, sailors, Coast Guard that have remained in the audience today and have stood guard in peacetime, and to those that have seen the terror, the horror, and the inhumanity of combat, and to those who paid the ultimate sacrifice, let it be said that we have been there for America, and let it be said that we will always be there to defend the Constitution of the United States when called to do so. The United States of America has been and is one of the greatest experiments of all time. It requires constant attention and change. Things will never remain the way they were, and that's okay. It's easy for us to be cynical during these times, but cynicism is not to be confused with wisdom. I witnessed firsthand young 19-year-old men and women arrive bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, ready to give and take on whatever arduous task I assign them. I watched firsthand Marines with six to seven combat deployments don 100-plus pound packs in 100-plus degree weather and walk towards that objective without any other consideration. I've witnessed their ingenuity and their cleverness prevail during situations where most would have buckled. I've witnessed Marines with pure grit continue to move forward during some of the most trying times. I have seen hundreds of our nation's youth walk into my recruitment office down in Florida and say, Captain Duluth, sir, I just want to serve the country. I've also witnessed the lighter side of the Marine Corps. Marines playing soccer with Afghan children who are no different than my children building schools in places where there were none, installing wells where people had to walk miles to get water. The memories of my Marines ripping open boxes of melted chocolates on any given day that were sent by support groups across the world. The countless laughs and jokes that I absolutely can't repeat today. All of this, all the laughter, the bond, even while we were far away from our loved ones, far away from everybody we were doing what we were doing for. We didn't think about politics or issues. We thought about each other. This is the reality. The ties that bond every one of us are stronger than anything that divides us. This is where we truly stand as a nation. To all our veterans and their families, I have a heartfelt and simple message. Thank you. Thank you for your unwavering service in peacetime and in war, here in this nation and throughout the world. And as I look out at the audience today, 
it's hard because I look out and I'm surrounded by so many that did so much more than I. So much greatness. Who am I to be standing here and talking to you? And when I think about the end of Afghanistan, everything that's around us today on this Veterans Day, I can sum it up today that every one of us, we can walk out of this room today with our heads held high, with the knowledge that we took up the mantle. We met the objective regardless of where it was and how it ended. We showed up. Thank you for attending today. God bless you. God bless your families, and God bless America. said at the beginning that this is a tradition that we're wise to keep. We were just reminded why in a very vivid, sincere, and moving way. I'd invite you, having just resumed your seats, to stand. <laughs> As the Hingham High School Band performs, God Bless America. Please join. <clears throat> Thank you. Please resume your seats. We now move to the awards portion of today's program, and in keeping with our tradition here in town, I invite last year's recipient of the Veteran of the Year Award forward, Tom Burbank. Tom will make the presentation this year to our Veteran of the Year. Thank you very much. You only get one chance in life sometimes to say something like this. And I want to depart a little bit from my remarks and just say, wow, Ben. <laughs> Semper Fi. <laughs> and yes, I'm emotional. But good morning. I am honored and privileged to have served as your 2020 Veteran of the Year. Isn't it great to be back in Sanborn Auditorium to continue the traditions of Veterans Armistice Day? With that said, please indulge me as I read the life accomplishments of the recipient of the 2021 Hank Maud 
Service Above Self, Veteran of the Year Award. This young man of 85 is known by those who love him to be selfless, generous, thoughtful, and giving. He is an extraordinary man, always willing to help. He goes above and beyond to fill the needs of his family, neighbors, and reaches out to strangers who are alone or suffering. He grew up in Memphis, Tennessee, and eventually was admitted to the U.S. Coast Guard Academy in Connecticut, where he met his wife, who attended Connecticut College for Women. After graduation, he was assigned to Pensacola Air for, excuse me, Air Pensacola for flight school. He served on Coast Guard ships and was assigned as a helicopter rescue pilot. During these deployments, he and his air rescue crews rescued 440 people. While on active duty, he and his beloved wife moved to many parts of the country. And after 24 years of service, he retired from the Coast Guard at the rank of commander. He then became a commercial airline pilot and retired as a captain from the Eastern Airlines. The couple moved to Ham in 1967 and raised their three children, Julie, Susan, and David, here today. They became active in the community and he continues to be deeply involved in Hingham. He is well known and respected for his generous service to the town. He is a proud veteran who stays in touch with many of his fellow Coast Guardmen and Eastern Airline brothers. He volunteers at the Hingham Veterans Office to help out in any way he can and was a past member of the Hingham Veterans Council. He also volunteered at the GAR Memorial Hall and through the years he has befriended veterans who live alone. He has spent time with them and kept them company when he could. He wants them to know that they are not forgotten. This man has led a bereavement group program for many years at St. Paul's Church for people who have lost loved ones. This support group was founded by he and his wife, Corrine. After Corrine's passing 10 years ago, he still continues this important outreach. This veteran is a hospice volunteer with the Norwell Visiting Nurse Association and visits with patients in the hospital or their homes where he provides help and support. Probably his most important and spectacular service has been to his family. He is a proud, devoted, generous, and loving father to his children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. The strength of his entire family stems from him being a wonderful husband to Corrine. Jack has family by example, has led his family by example of honor, humor, intelligence, in, intelligence and faith, and forgiving of people who make mistakes reading. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great honor and pleasure to introduce the Town of Hingham's 2021 Veteran of the Year, my friend and fellow veteran, Commander Henry Jack Rayburn, U.S. Coast Guard, retired. Is it on? Yes. 
Yes, it is. Oh, super. I did not prepare any remarks at all. <laughs> I didn't know I was going to be called upon. Uh, I am humbled by this award. Uh, I accept it for all of those people that I work with in hospice. Just last week, I visited a 98-year-old woman who served in the Marines in World War II. And she, her voice was so strong and so vibrant, her eyes sparkled so. And she, she said, I am very proud to be a Marine, she said. There are spars and there are whacks, and the Coast Guard had spars and waves and the like. They told us we're not anything different from the other Marines, we're all Marines. And I, she was a great woman, and I'm so honored to be able to share the last days of people such as her. Thank you. Allow me to read uh, three citations, one from the Massachusetts House, one from the Massachusetts Senate, and then from the town itself. The Commonwealth of Massachusetts, be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincere congratulations to Commander Henry C. Rayburn, United States Coast Guard, in recognition of being named Veteran of the Year and your sincere dedication to the United States of America, given this 11th day of November, 2021, Ronald Mariano, Speaker of the House, in a resolution offered by James Murphy, State Representative. Next, we have a resolution from our State Senate. An official citation, be it known that the Massachusetts Senate hereby extends its congratulations to Jack Rayburn, United States Coast Guard, in recognition of being named the Town of Hingham's 2021 Veteran of the Year for Jack's outstanding dedication and service to our country. And be it further known that the Commonwealth Senate extends its best wishes for continued success. The citation is to be duly signed, and it is, by the President of the Senate and attested to and transmitted by the Clerk of the Senate of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And then we have the Town of Hingham and the Hingham Veterans Council wishes to extend its heartfelt thanks and appreciation for your participation in our annual Veterans Day observance. Each Veterans Day should be a time when Americans stop and remember the brave men and women who have risked their lives for the United States of America. As President Eisenhower said, it is well for us to pause to acknowledge our debt to those who paid so large a share of freedom's price. As we stand here in grateful remembrance of the veterans' contributions, we renew our conviction of individual responsibility to live in ways that support the eternal truths upon which our nation is founded and from which flows all its strength and all its greatness. The certificate is issued to Commander Henry C. Henry C. Rayburn, United States Coast Guard, with the appreciation of the town of Hingham and its Veterans Council. Now, having kept you in suspense for a minute or two, <laughs> I'll read another citation. The town of Hingham is honored now to present a certificate of appreciation and a coin of excellence.
to today's principal speaker, Captain Benjamin M. DeLu. I'll read the certificate that uh, Selectman Ramsey has just given to Ben DeLu. The town of Hingham and the Hingham Veterans Council wishes to extend its heartfelt thanks and appreciation for your participation today. Again, to quote the words of Dwight Eisenhower, it is well for us to pause, to acknowledge our debt to those who paid so large a share of freedom's price. As we stand here in grateful remembrance of the veterans' contributions, we renew our conviction of individual responsibility to live in ways that support the eternal truths upon which our nation is founded and from which flows all its strength and all its greatness. The certificate was awarded today, the 11th of November in 2021, to Ben DeLu, with the thanks of a grateful town and a Veterans Council signed by the Veterans Service, Officer, the Select Board, and the Council and its membership. The final award today is a proclamation from Governor Baker the Honorable Charles Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and will be read by Hingham High School Veterans Appreciation Council President, Maddie Iconis, and Vice President, Amy Maffey. A proclamation. Whereas, since the Commonwealth's colonial days, thousands of men and women have served our country in defense of freedom and liberty. And whereas, on November 11, 1918, the armistice was signed in the Forest of Compiègne by the Allied Nations in Germany, ending World War I, the world to end all wars, after four years of conflict. And whereas, since that day, every November, people from around the nation have gathered to honor our veterans. And whereas, there are approximately 380,000 veterans living in Massachusetts, and whereas today we are reminded of the great sacrifices and contributions our veterans have made to our country. And whereas we honor and salute those who have served our country throughout the generations with honor, patriotism, and courage. And whereas it is appropriate that all Massachusetts citizens remember this, the bravery of those who served their country so that their dedication and sacrifices serve as a reminder of the cost of our freedom. And whereas in November 2021, the World War com commemorated the 103rd anniversary of the armistice that ended the fighting of World War I, at 11 a.m. November 11th, 1918, the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. Now, therefore, I, Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim November 11th, 2021 to be Veterans Day. And urge all the citizens of the Commonwealth to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly in its observance. Given at the Executive Chamber in Boston, this 11th day in November, in the year of 2021, and the independence of the United States of America, the 245th, by His Excellency, Charles D. Baker, Karen E. Polito, William Francis Galvin. God save the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Thank you. I'd invite you all please to rise as Jay Ippolito returns to give the benediction and then to remain standing as we retire the colors. Let us pray. Lord God, we love you, we honor you, and we adore you. We put our faith and trust in you to protect and support those who have given so much of themselves to serve the, uh, serve the armed forces of the United States of America. As we prepare to close the ceremony, help us to remember always what precious gifts our veterans are to us and to this great nation. Let us honor them, not just today, but every day. 
May the appreciation of their service be held in the highest regard by future generations. God bless our veterans, and God bless America. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing. This concludes the indoor portion of, the of today's ceremony. Please remain standing at your seats until the color guard has passed by and leads all of us to the outside, to the Veteran Memorial, where we will have our traditional wreath-laying ceremony. Captain DeLue. Detail, attention, parade, colors. Big alert, sound, retreat. Present on. Let us gather now as a community at the Veterans Memorial right outside Town Hall. Bigler, sound to the colors. Four, arm. Ready. Aim. 